Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, True Crime Educational. I do apologise for the lateness of this video, and I hope you find it worth the wait. I thought we could really kick off this channel with a little series of videos, and I thought we could start off with South Wales' most notorious killers. I think the last video does come into that category, so if you haven't seen it, I definitely think you should go back and give it a quick watch. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. In today's video, we will be talking about the case of Tracy Woodford, who went out shopping never to return home, and was sadly found in the most shocking way imaginable. First, I do need to mention a disclaimer as this video contains themes of sexual assault, necrophilia, body dismemberment and substance use. If you would not like to hear about such things, I totally understand and I hope to see you in my next video. I would like to say that I mean no disrespect to anybody talked about in this video or to any persons watching this video. The intent is for educational and documentary purposes. Viewer discretion is advised. So today's video is of a woman called Tracy Woodford who was tragically taken from this world in the most brutal way. Tracy Woodford was born on the 13th of February 1968 and grew up in a town called Widderfellin in Rhonda Sinantaf just outside Pontypridd, Cardiff, South Wales. She lived there with her mother Linda and her brother Sean and also made frequent visits to her sister Sharon Maven's home. Tracy was described as a gentle soul and her mother said she lived a simple life which revolved around her family. She enjoyed nothing more than crossword puzzles and spending time with her family. She was a great auntie to her nephews and nieces and didn't have a bad bone in her body. People said she wouldn't hurt a fly on the wall. She was such a loving and kind person but also a fragile and lonely person. She didn't really socialise that much outside of her family. She was unemployed, she didn't have a boyfriend, she didn't have many friends, and that made her very depressed, which led her to drink alcohol on a regular basis. Tracy went out at least once a week to Pontypridd Town Centre to do some shopping. And even though she didn't have much in the sense of possessions or money, she would always treat her family. She was also buying a ring from a shop called Cash Generator, which she was saving up for and already had put a deposit down for it. On Tuesday the 21st of April 2015, Tracy left her home in Rudafellin and went to do her usual shop in Pontypridd. Whilst Tracy was out in Pontypridd town, she finally went back to that Cash Generator shop to pick up the ring she had been saving up for. She then went to a few bars in Pontypridd for a few drinks and was soon getting quite intoxicated. About quarter to eight that evening, she arrived at a pub called The Skinny Dog, where she would meet a man named Christopher May, sitting with a group of his friends. I would like to say at this point Tracy was drunk, so drunk to the point she actually got refused and given a glass of coke when she arrived at The Skinny Dog. She was also noticed to be nervous and fragile and that caught Christopher May's attention, and he and his friends invited Tracy to sit with them. Who is Christopher? Well, Christopher May is a man of pure evil who disguised himself as a pleasant man. He was born in 1964 and grew up in Pontypridd on the outskirts of Cardiff. He started working from the age of 14 at a butcher's called Hadley's in Pontypridd, where he worked for 18 years until 1991. He learnt his trade as a butcher there and became very skilled at that job over those 18 years. Colleagues who worked with him enjoyed working with him and even said he was excellent with his butchery skills. But even though Christopher had a respectable job and seemed quite settled into life, he was quite a troubled young man. He had previous convictions for burglary and theft in 1982 and driving with excessive alcohol in 2005 and 2010. And then the worst conviction yet was back in 1995, where Christopher was actually convicted of arson after setting a school alight and was found inside by firefighters playing the piano. He was sentenced to 18 months for that incident. Christopher then later worked as a taxi driver, a factory worker 
and also as a pot washer at the Grill Steakhouse where he worked at the time of this case. At the age of 31, Christopher moved to Cardiff where he met his wife Tina. They had two children together and separated in 2002 when Christopher was 38. Sadly, in 2010, Tina took her own life whilst living in Kent. As far as I know, it has no connections with May, but I thought I'd mention it as it could be a reason why his personality changed so much. Even though they weren't together, she was still the mother of their children, and that cannot have been easy for him. After the breakup of his marriage, Chris moved to Aberdeer before returning to living in a flat in Andrews Court, Gwaig, Pontypridd, living what he described as a hermit-like existence. He started drinking a lot and regularly went into the pub, The Skinny Dog. But even though he was not always on the right side of the law and had some sad things happen to him, friends that had known him for up to 15 years described him as a pleasant fella who had always been a laugh, always been a laugh. He was somebody that they could invite around to watch the rugby. The bartender at the Skinny Dog pub also said she never had a bad word to say about him, clearly not knowing his vicious capabilities. He kept some of his dark side to himself. But others saw a very sinister side and saw that he was quite lechy and would make inappropriate comments to and about women, which would be quite obsessive and vulgar. Now going back to the case that we were discussing, as I said previously, Tracy had been out in Pontypridd doing her weekly shop and had been drinking throughout the day. She arrived at the Skinny Dog pub at quarter to eight where she got refused alcohol and got given a glass of coke instead. Christopher noticed Tracy and how vulnerable she was. He and his friends invited her to join the table, which she accepted. Tracy and Chris hit it off quite well. Chris was quite persistent in taking Tracy home and said to her, if I buy you enough drinks, maybe I can take you home. And she replied, I'm not that type of girl. But the group of four left the pub together and headed towards the kebab shop, all except Tracy and Chris, who were headed towards the railway station and Chris's flat hand in hand. Chris says they were kissing and cuddling under the railway bridge before they went back to his flat and had sex. After that, they went back to Chris's flat. They had more drinks, listened to music and flew to some more. But Chris made a pass at Tracy, which she did not want. She rejected Chris's sexual advances, but he did not like this and in a fit of rage began to strangle Tracy with his bare hands until the life had drained from her body. He did not do much at first. He said he sat and had a cigarette on a sofa and also later evidence found on his laptop proves that he was watching pornographic videos until 6am the next morning on the 22nd. The next day, on Wednesday the 22nd of April 2015, Tracy did not return home from a night out and her family became very worried as this was not like her at all. They quickly filed a missing persons report. Chris also did not show up to his job at the Grill Steakhouse that day, but no one thought anything of that. Police begin immediately looking for Tracy and begin to retrace her last steps which then they find out she was caught on CCTV walking with Chris in the direction of his flat after they left the pub. So they know he was the last person to see her before she went missing. After public appeals and talking to the community, South Wales Police pay a visit to Christopher May's flat on Friday the 24th of April. He was reluctant to let them in and asked if they would come back another time. But luckily they did not do that as what they find in his flat is utterly shocking. Police enter the flat and have a look around. Chris was avoiding them going into the bathroom. Whilst police are having a look around, they notice that the place is very clean and that there are a lot of cleaning projects around. Chris is acting very shady as well, especially when they're going towards the bathroom. He just knew that his time was up then, as the bathroom was where they make the first shopping discovery. They go into the bathroom and they pull back the curtains of Christopher's shower and find the severed limbs of Tracy Woodford's body. It is quite clear to say that Chris had tried to dispose of Tracy's body in a horrifying way. He used his skills as a butcher and used secateurs 
a saw and scissors to dismember Tracy Woodford's body after taking her life. Clearly showing no remorse or no respect to the life that he had just taken, trying to hide what he had done in a terrifying way. They arrest him immediately and he already starts claiming self-defence. They also asked where they could find the rest of her. He said, quote, some in the cupboard and some in the storm drain at Ponty Preeth Rugby Club. After this comment, police conduct more of an extensive search in his home and also find the torso in his kitchen cupboard and they find a purse with her right thumb inside. As I said before, police arrest Christopher straight away after the discovery at his flat on suspicion of murder. He would then go on to claim that this was an act of self-defence as he caught her stealing from him after they allegedly had sex and when he caught her, she launched at him and he reacted by strangling her, by taking a loving soul from this world and then went on to dismember his victim. His claims were later thrown out and this crime was accepted to be sexually motivated. Also, later on, prosecution believes and also I believe that he made a pass at her and she rejected him. And so he grabbed her neck and squeezed till there was no life left in her body and then covered it up in the most disrespectful way. So how could that be an accident? Also, as police arrest Christopher and take him into custody, they also conduct an extensive search of the Pontypridd Rugby Football Club area and find the severed head of Tracy Woodford in the exact spot Christopher told them it would be. Also, at his flat, they find Tracy's internal organs blocking his toilet where he had tried to flush them away, which is just disturbing and sickening. I can't imagine what Tracy's family felt when they had to hear what happened to her. After police find the remains, they conduct an autopsy which reveals what everyone already knew, that it was indeed Tracy Woodford and the cause of death to be strangulation, and then dismembered to try and conceal her identity. Semen was also found in her body, but it is not sure whether Chris had sex with Tracy before or after he had killed her. It is thought to be afterwards, as the evidence found on his laptop at the time of the crime and after the crime suggests it was more likely after the murder took place and not the way Chris had described in his statement. Police also ask how her head ended up in the storm drain. He said he carried it in a pound stretcher bag, which is just your usual 5p carrier bag that almost see through, very flimsy. So I really don't know how anybody did not notice him carrying a human head through a town centre. Anyway, so what first started out as a missing person case has now sadly turned into a horrific murder case. Everyone was shocked that something so sick could happen under their noses. This rocked both communities of Pontypridd and Rudifelin, where Tracy lived. She was known to a lot of people and was known only as a lovely, kind woman. On November 18th, 2015, the trial of Christopher May began. He pleaded not guilty to murder, but admits he caused her death by self-defence and loss of control. And he also sticks to his original statement. The judge does not accept this and instead accepts that this was in fact a deliberate sexually motivated act and a callous murder. He sat in a courtroom with no emotion whatsoever and looked directly at the family he had just ruined with nothing, no apology, just silence. It took less than an hour for the jury to come to a verdict and not long after, Christopher May was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum serve of 28 years, making him eligible for release in 2043. But if he does get released, he will remain on licence to the end of his days. Once the verdict and sentencing was read out, Tracy's family screamed yes at the verdict they had got. They will never be the same from what has happened to their family but they got justice for their innocent, loving family member who was horrifically taken from this world and mutilated by a complete stranger. Tracy's family said, no words can explain what Christopher May has done to our family. His action on that night in April and over the following days with what he did to Tracy's body has destroyed us all. 
We simply cannot understand how anybody can treat another human be in this way. Tracy's mother now has nightmares from what happened to Tracy and they say that time can never heal the pain. And that is it for this video. As always, my thoughts and prayers go out to the families involved in this case. And again, I mean no harm to any person involved or watching this video. I would like to thank you all for watching to the end. I would also like to remind you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content as it will help me out a lot. I hope to see you again in my next video. Thank you. Bye.